Hi everyone, welcome to Medicine for Dummies. I'm Dr. V. Welcome to the third and final video on acquired heart diseases. Before you begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and let me know in the comments below if you need any other topic covered. Today, we are going to talk about Kawasaki disease. This is a condition commonly seen in children below 6 years of age. It was first found by a Japanese pediatrician, Dr. Kawasaki, who found several cases of a febrile illness with the same presentation pattern. Its incidence is actually significantly higher in Japan. The etiology or cause of this condition is still unknown, but its effects are mainly immune mediated. Kawasaki disease is actually a set of vague symptoms that we might see in any other condition. You usually get a high fever lasting for more than five days. Also, you get a non-purulent conjunctivitis, meaning that the conjunctivae are red, but there is no pus in the eye. You can get a red tongue and mouth, known as strawberry tongue, and also cervical lymphadenopathy. You can also see red palms and soles, and an erythematous rash that is non-vesicular. You can get perineal and periungual desquamation, where the skin peels off, and erythema or induration of the BCG scar. You can also get irritability of small children and different sorts of presentations such as arthritis, aseptic meningitis, and urethritis. You can also get the vague symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea. This condition is usually seen in boys between the ages of 5 months and 6 years. One of the reasons it may not be seen in younger children less than 4 months is that maternal antibodies provide protection to the baby. Complications mainly involve the heart. It usually involves medium vessel arteries like the coronary arteries. The most dangerous complication is coronary artery dilatation and aneurysm formation. This is deadly because it can rupture and cause sudden cardiac death in children. Other complications are coronary thrombosis and myocardial infarction, myocarditis, pericardial effusion, heart failure, and valve involvement. On examination, you can see periungal desquamation and erythema, like in this picture, and red soles and palms like this. You can also get a non purulent conjunctivitis, as I mentioned before, and the characteristic strawberry tongue given in this picture. In this image, you can see cervical lymphadenopathy. Here is the non-vesicular rash you get in Kawasaki disease, and the next two pictures show desquamation and erythema of the hands and feet. We can carry out some investigations to help our diagnosis. In basic investigations, when you do a full blood count, you may be able to see high neutrophil counts, low hemoglobin, and increased platelets. The acute phase reactants can be elevated and liver enzymes may be elevated. The UFR can show pus cells, but the urine culture may show no growth. So Kawasaki disease is actually one cause of sterile pyuria. Serum albumin levels can be reduced and when a 2D echo is carried out, Coronary artery aneurysms, thrombosis, and hypokinetic segments indicative of myocardial infarction may be seen. This is mainly a clinical diagnosis, and we use a set of clinical criteria to diagnose the disease. The mnemonic we use is CREAM. Essentially, the mandatory criteria we must have is fever for more than 5 days. 
The other five criteria are conjunctivitis, non-vesicular rash, edema, lymphadenopathy, and mucosal involvement, of which at least four are needed to come to a diagnosis of Kawasaki disease. The management is mainly supportive. Since this is reported to be immune-mediated, the mainstay is IV immunoglobulin single dose. We can also give anti-inflammatory therapy such as methylprednisolone. To prevent thrombosis, we give aspirin for 6 to 8 weeks, and if there is an aneurysm, we have to give warfarin to anticoagulate. If inflammation is persisting despite all other measures, we can use immunosuppressants such as corticosteroids, cyclosporin, or infliximab. You know that cyclosporin is usually used to reduce cell proliferation, and infliximab is a monoclonal antibody with the same action. So, that is all you need to know on Kawasaki disease. In this short video, we went through the points in the history, findings in the examination, the investigation findings, diagnostic criteria, and management of the disease. If you want to learn more, keep tuned for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching!